Today we're going to be looking at the internet. For starter activity, I want you to have a look at this picture and see what you think it is. I'll pause and I'll give a quick explanation. This image is of a representation of the internet and all of its connections that exist. And you can see some of the sort of uh, more dense clusters where you might consider there to be, for example, major cities or major sort of populations of people connected to networks. Um, and you can sort of see how every device sort of connects, communicates um, around the internet. Specification content today then, we're looking to understand what a DNS or a domain name server is, how hosting works, what the cloud is, as well as a little bit about web servers and clients. And we've touched on clients previously when we looked at client and server networks. The requirements, so we're looking at the concept of the internet as a network of computers, the domain name service and how that works, the concept of servers, the DNS's role in conversion of URLs into IP addresses, the cloud and how that works, as well as some of the advantages and disadvantages of the cloud. So first of all, the internet. It's worth noting that the internet is essentially just all of the pieces of hardware, so this, the cabling, the servers, switches, devices, anything that makes up our massive network of connected computers. And the internet is the physical hardware that exists enabling us to run the World Wide Web, which is software based on top of the internet. So there's a subtle difference there. Servers themselves are specialist devices, specialist computers that have given purposes. So there's lots and lots of different types of servers out there. And ultimately that server acts as a kind of a communication device, but in a number of different ways. So you can have things like web servers, which are responsible for hosting our websites. Now, what we mean by hosting is the website is saved on those servers. And when someone requests the data or requests to go to that website, that server will load up that uh, or send the data for that web page to that device. We'll talk more a little bit about how that happens further into this presentation. So hosting is the idea of that server actually has that website stored on it. File servers, so things like Google Drive is a great example of a file server, something you're familiar with and, and use on a regular basis. So this is where all of your files and documents are stored online somewhere. Email servers, which are used for communication. So an email server's responsibility is obviously to send and receive and direct those emails to the right people. And all of these servers are physical devices that sit somewhere in a data center, for example, where there's just lots and lots of servers stacked together that we use. So a DNS server, now a DNS server, it's worthwhile noting, um, is the way in which, or without a DNS server, our internet would be much, much more challenging. So a DNS server enables us to use website addresses rather than having to remember the website's IP addresses. So when we type in a website address into our web browser, it's the DNS server that helps us find the IP address and direct us to our website. And this happens in stages. So when we go onto our web browser, be it something like Google Chrome, Safari, Edge, whatever browser you're using, and you type in the URL into that web browser, that URL gets sent across by your internet provider to a DNS server. And a DNS query is carried out where they look up to see what IP address matches that website's URL. Now, if that website's URL isn't found, then that request could be escalated to a higher level of DNS. And if it's the case that it's not found on any of the DNSs, then obviously you get an error come back to say that the page has not been found. However, if it's the case that it is found on one of the higher level DNSs, that uh, address gets copied to the lower level DNS so that it's stored there for the future. So you type in the URL to your browser, that browser sends the URL to the DNS, the DNS then looks up for the corresponding IP address. If it can't find it, escalates that process. If it does find the IP address, what it then does is returns that IP address to the computer that's requested it, enabling that computer to then connect to the server that is at that IP address. Once it connects to the server that's at that IP address, that server will then carry out its function, for example, host where it's hosting a website, and then serves that website to the computer that's made that request. That website will then appear on the screen in the browser of the computer that's looked up, uh, for it. Now this happens very, very quickly. This isn't something that takes a long time to do. Um, and it happens every time you try and type in a URL into your search engine. And you can see in the text, I've got an explanation there as well as an image to try and support that idea of a DNS query. So what is the cloud then? So it's worthwhile commenting the cloud is in essence uh, just physical hardware devices that are connected to the internet that are stored in a remote location from us. So whilst we're sat in our own sort of offices, classrooms, wherever, 
It's a case that when you're ac accessing anything on the internet, so for example, cloud storage, and we mentioned already Google Drive being an example of that, all of our files are just stored on a hard disk drive or a, a some form of memory out on the internet somewhere. It's just a case of it not being on site. And this cloud computing really kind of has come a long way in more recent years. If you think about things like Google Stadia or any other online sort of gaming platforms or streaming services where content is dealt with, actioned, or even processed on a device that's connected to the internet and then served to your device. This is what cloud computing is. So if we think about um, things like video, video editing software, where you can have something on the internet do the processing for that video, it means that you're not having to have such a powerful device that you're using because you're using a server that is specially specially designed for that purpose and you, like i said playing high-end video games is, is becoming a more common practice now where your high-end video game is running on a computer that's connected to the internet somewhere else that is running some high-end graphics um, and high-end other components as well that is simply then streamed to your device and so your device is only having to handle the video feedback rather than necessarily having to deal with processing all of the graphics and complex things that are happening in that game so cloud computing gives us lots of advantages. There are a few disadvantages as well that are worthwhile considering. So such as advantages, it gives us virtually unlimited storage. So what we mean by that is if you think about the Google Drive, for example, if you're storing stuff on your Google Drive, you can keep storing as much stuff as you like until you reach your uh, allowed sort of capacity. Uh, but that could be expanded and that may come at a cost. However, you can in theory just keep expanding your storage. So things like mobile phones and portable devices where they may not have much onboard storage, it gives you um, additional functionality. Equally, you can access your files from anywhere and, and, and on any device. So if you think about, again, using Google Drive, you can log on to any computer at school. You can log on to a Chromebook, laptop. You could probably even get onto it via a games console to be able to access your files and uh, information. And that's true for anywhere in the world. And as I say, any internet enabled device, generally speaking, um, with browser functionality will allow you to connect to the, your services. You've also got the ability to collaborate with others. So this means you can work together. And as you've probably done in the past, sharing files with each other, working on the same file at the same time. So the cloud allows us to have a central point where we can work together. There are some disadvantages though, and that is, as mentioned already, that there can be costs associated with it as well. So you will pay for how much you use in most instances. So for those of you that have got things like iCloud, for example, where you'll be given a smaller amount for free, but then have to be uh, paid for a higher level of um, storage. You also need to have an internet connection. So as we've all experienced before, a poor internet connection can seriously impact our use of these services that are cloud-based. Now. It's, it's a given, you have to have an internet connection to use these cloud services. Equally also, you're gonna rely on the security of another person or company. And this is both in terms of security, in terms of physical security. We don't want it to our stuff to be hosted on a server that's in the middle of a busy town center with no one guarding it. So they tend to be in sort of more secure locations, but equally preventing someone from hacking into or gaining uh, unlawful access into our data um, on our servers. So at that point we're, as I said, not in control of how the security works and therefore we may have to consider whether or not the companies that we're using meet our standards.